site in the west of Scotland. It's a rocket built by amateurs. Indeed, they say it'll be the biggest amateur-built rocket ever launched in Britain. Amateur rocket enthusiasts who are gathering at Kelburn Castle in Ayrshire for International Rocket Week say they can sometimes beat the bigger space boffins at the American Space Agency, NASA, for example, when it comes to developing new space technologies. Hugh Williams reports. I'll uh, call Glasgow Air Traffic Control now. Over. On a moor road high above the village of Fairley, south of Largs, the amateur rocketeers of International Rocket Week prepare for launch. OK, let's go now, John. Over. Oh, not quite yet. That's 420. It's not quite 420 yet. Today's rockets are set to soar up to 7,000 feet into the sky, high enough to need permission from air traffic control. Eventually, all systems are go and the Pleiades rocket blasts off from the moor, burning a dark smouldering hole in the hillside and sending a plume of smoke billowing across to the waiting spectators. And incredibly quickly and incredibly noisily, the rocket is off the launch pad and up into the low cloud. And everyone's peering at the sky to try and see whether it's deployed properly and where it's going to come back down to Earth. John to Sean, I think it was I've got the visual here, Sean. Beautiful, Sean, thanks. The stages of the rocket fall gently back to Earth, swinging from their parachutes towards a nearby reservoir and over a flock of sheep. As the pieces land, some of the sheep scatter, but most of them ignore it. They've seen this all before. John Bonser, one of the organisers, says today's high-powered rocket launches may have been impressive, but the weekend's launch of the giant corpulent stump should make a little piece of history. For amateur rockets in the UK and here in Scotland, it's a, it's a big day tomorrow. And for this event, the International Rocket Week, at this site, it's an important launch because if it goes off successfully, it'll become very well known that we can do things like that at this, this site in cooperation with all the authorities and air traffic control, which means we'll get more launches of that kind here. Richard Brown is the man behind the big red rocket, which towers over him as he assembles it back at Rocket Week headquarters and gets ready for tomorrow's launch. He's only been interested in amateur rocketry for about three years, ever since his girlfriend gave him a kit to build his first ever rocket. But this one is much, much bigger. It should be a, the largest rocket in the UK ever launched non-commercial. Um, we're looking to launch a 50 kilo rocket should go to about 6,000 feet. It should do about 500 mile an hour, naught to 100 mile an hour in about 1.1 seconds, something like that, off of the launch tower. You could describe Richard Brown's rocket as a huge bright red cardboard tube, and in one sense you'd be right, but it is packed with expensive electronics, altimeters and sensors, GPS and live telemetry, feeding information back to a laptop on the ground and it'll break up into separate stages as it lifts into the air. John Bonser says that idea is just one of many, pioneered by amateurs and later taken up by professional rocketeers. On December the 31st, 1937, in St James's Park in Paisley, using modified firework rockets, they launched the world's first completely successful three-stage rocket. Other amateurs elsewhere in America and Europe and in Russia started working with liquid fuel rockets. Uh, uh, Robert Hutch, Dr. Robert Hutchins Goddard in America flew the world's first successful liquid fuel rocket on March the 16th, 1926. Practical experiments of that kind in, in, in Great Britain were actually officially banned. The Paisley Rocketeers carried on their experiments using firework rockets because no one had actually told them that, that they weren't allowed to do it. One of the space enthusiasts here has made a working rocket in the shape of the TARDIS. So, of course, he's got the Doctor Who theme tune as the ringtone on his mobile phone. Another works as a doctor in intensive care, specialising in the treatment of patients with serious brain injuries. So he's the closest thing I'm ever likely to meet to a brain surgeon who is also a rocket scientist. But all the rocket men and the very few rocket women taking part in this event hope to prove tomorrow that they really can reach for the stars. Hugh Williams reporting there. You're listening to The World Tonight on Radio 4 with Robin Lustig. In a moment, protest.